decorate them for the sake of everyone here. Mm -hmm. So we would really like to have an open consultation session based on the CAMSA report. We found mm -hmm. a lot of inconsistencies in the report, and we've had a lot of reactions to the report itself mm -hmm. from the faculty, from students, and so we would like to hold, have the university administration hold open consultation mm -hmm. sessions on the report itself, and then come back with a revised report to the Board of Governors. The second thing that we would like to do is to have a public disclosure of all experts mm -hmm. that you consulted in the process. I think that's really important for folks to know, mm -hmm. um, especially in the yeah. in considering who, who we consider to be an expert on mm -hmm. this, right? Yeah. Uh, and finally, um, we would like for yourself to make a statement mm -hmm. um, acknowledging that the activities of the fossil fuel industry do indeed have grave social injury. Um, and that's something that I think that we find extremely, mm -hmm. yeah. extremely important. So okay. I'm guessing, I, I guess, would you be able to at first maybe just give us your preliminary thoughts on those yes. demands? Well, let me start with my preliminary thoughts about the whole, uh, the whole issue. Mm -hmm. Because um, I think we might be focusing on places where we might not agree, and I acknowledge that, that we don't agree on everything. But there are a lot of things on which we agree, and I'd like us to be clear about that. I think we don't disagree at all that there is uh, climate change. We believe the science. I'm a scientist, you know. We believe the science. There is climate. There's always been climate change, but there is a different kind now. Added climate yeah, change. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that we're you're, you're disagreeing on, okay, on so we're on the same climate climate change. Let's just make sure we know where there's no one who disagrees that there is climate change that is additional impact caused by the human presence. Mm -hmm. largely after the industrial age. Okay, we all agree with the science. <laughs> yes, I'm yeah. glad yeah. none of us live okay. in the dark ages. So I just want to make sure that nobody thinks that we have deniers on the board. Or nobody. No. Yeah, no. We, are, okay. we are both. Okay. okay, so we all agree on that, and uh, we all agree that it is urgent to take action. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we agree on goals, and I, you, know, you followed Paris and all of that. We agree of where we need to go. As a planet, so, yeah, I think so. We all agree on that. Okay, I just want to make sure you know, because if we know where uh, we all in agreement, it's, it's a good place to start anyway. And then we, I like clarity. So we all clear on that. We all clear that we must take action. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, okay. And like, I mean, I would. It'd be cool if we could talk about our more specific demands. Okay, I, I think can we're talk all, about your more specific yeah. demands. So what we. Uh, came to a conclusion, uh, not, not just uh, last week, but is that it is important that we take action. And the report of cancer talked about specific actions that we will take in this university. And there's no question that because it's a community commitment and community engagement, we need to have open discussions about that. So this will happen. Okay. All right. So you will be doing. You will be having. Can you tell me this? We will for have this? a specific forum to discuss the actions we will take to uh, deal with the issue of climate change and and increasing, well, our contribution to creating a more sustainable environment as a community. Yeah. This will happen, as you know. Uh, one of the recommendations in the cancer report is that. Uh, this be elevated, the whole issue, to uh, one of governance as well as one of management, which means that the board is going to be wanting to take its role as a board, stewardship role, and making sure that we're doing the things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to engage the whole community in this debate. And this this uh, forum. Will this forum include divestment specifically, as is written in our demands? It's not a recommendation of cancer. I, so, I recognize that. We, so our demand we will, is to hold public hearings on the CAMSA report. So I have a copy of the CAMSA report here, as well as educational events. No, such if as you if you ask me, and I'll be clear, we mm -hmm. want to certainly have these rec these forums to discuss the recommendations of the CAMSA report and the concrete actions we will take. And we can we, and divestment itself. Well, people may say we should take that action too. I will, you know, this is one of the fundamental principles 
of a university is freedom of speech. So if somebody in the room says, then what about divestment? Of course, it will be part of the forum. Yeah, I mean, that's what our, our recommendation is but, specifically on divestment. I mean, I think what the principal is talking about, I mean, we, we had this experience uh, several years ago when I was at the center of it. We held, for example, a seri an open forum on freedom of expression and peaceful assembly. When that, was a, when yes. that was a uh, yeah. when that was a uh, an important issue, and it's always an important issue for university. Yeah. And of course, people expressed all sorts of different yeah. views in that open forum. And in my report, I tried to, uh, as faithfully as possible, report the different different mm -hmm. different views on on that. So I would say that I see this open forum on the recommendations of the Kansas report being something similar, in which, of course, people in that. Uh, Forum. It's an open forum. By open, definition, yeah. people can make various yeah. statements that they want. Yeah, um, and I actually think that that's interesting that you bring that up because in the that forum, mm -hmm. there was a lot of discussion about the provisional protocol, correct? Mm -hmm. um, and then that protocol was then revised in more permanent operating procedures. So in that sense, we're kind of asking for something similar. We have this CAMSA report, which we are deeply dissatisfied with, we would like these public consultation sessions to occur and then for a revised report to be submitted to the Board of Governors for approval. I will not commit to that. Uh, uh, so I, I'll, be, I'll be clear. Uh, the council did its work. It uh, delivered its report. It was voted on. Uh, you understand processes as well as I do. Uh, you don't, re you know, you don't continuously retrial re the same thing. You know, it's done. That work is done. We're interested in moving forward now. Yeah, I don't actually really understand that. I recognize processes, but I don't think that we should get fully caught up in them. I believe in this situation, the process failed. I don't think that that is the process. That, uh, what's done is done is an acceptable answer to the 2,500 people who signed onto our letter, to 150 professors, to the three faculties who have given us support. Those voices were not heard in this consultation, and that is why I would mm -hmm. strongly insist that after these consultation sessions, that a report be rewritten and resubmitted. So as I said, I cannot commit to that. I mean, you... this is completely outside of normal governance processes in our university. And I think it is important to hear, to continue having our ears open, to continue hear the voice of the community, to have the forums that the provost is suggesting, absolutely. But uh, we're not going to say, oh, well, a part of the community would like us to redo the work one more time. No, I, I will not make that commitment, obviously. This is not the kind of processes that uh, I, I would... I would be able to commit to. But certainly to have an open forum and how we move forward, I th absolutely. I'm just wondering though, for example, within the CAMSA report itself, there are several inconsistencies. For example, you acknowledge that you don't find grave social injury and despite, mm -hmm. so for example, the Divest Miguel yeah. had given four reasons for the de facto yeah. the de facto impact yeah. that fossil fuel companies cause great social injury, exploration, mm -hmm. lobbying, failure to pledge unburnable carbon reserves, and failure to obtain indigenous consent. Um, and while you address the topics of exploration, lobbying, and failure to burn, failure to pledge to mm -hmm. not burn the extra reserves, you didn't even talk about indigenous consent. And I find that that is particularly troubling, especially given that we had in students from the Indigenous Student Alliance speaking mm -hmm. at our rallies today, yeah. saying, how dare you not say that there's no social injury, no grave social injury on yeah. our communities. So I, and so I, I don't I understand, can you just let me finish? Yeah. I don't understand how we could have these pu public consultation mm -hmm. sessions on this report that have such inconsistencies and completely ignore the lived realities of students on our own campus mm -hmm. and yet refuse to change that for report. Yeah. So let, let me just say a few things here. Um, we never said that there was no negative impact. So that's the, There's uh, no grave. Yeah, the impact. grave, which is a standard as defined yeah. by the cancer, it's is too, the one we didn't know. Yeah, didn't I, have. I have it. I have yeah, it yeah. you have yeah, it and you understand yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, so that is one point. The other thing is, uh, and, and that was a choice of the cancer uh, group committee, 
was, of course, we could have written a report that was 200 page long. Yeah, we could. And we probably wouldn't be here today. We'd still be working and, and, uh, and re re uh, writing this report. <coughs> There's been a lot written about this. Uh, a lot of work has been done in many, many university communities. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you did acknowledge the other three, though, but you didn't acknowledge the failure to obtain indigenous consent, which, in my in my opinion, is the most clear example of the violation or of the enforcement of rules of domestic or international laws against the deprivation of health, safety, or basic freedoms. To me, that's a very clear cut example of a violation of those international laws and by your definition of grave social injury. So I mean that's just an example of an inconsistency of an inconsistency with this report that I think a lot of students, a lot of faculty, a lot of alumni will have a lot to say about. And I cannot accept that you will have these open sessions. Well I encourage you to voice your opinion on this. I mean you know nothing prevents mm -hmm. you from doing that. No, I mean, and, and we acknowledge so, that we've been expecting you know, our opinion for a really well, long this time. Is, uh, this is uh, nothing prevents. I'm just saying that CAMSA was charged with making a recommendation to the board, and it did so. Mm -hmm. The board made a decision to approve certain actions that we need to take as a community. That's where we are now, uh, today. So we want to move on those actions as quickly as possible. Uh, we want to uh, have a clear plan of action that the whole community will participate in because that's the reality of this very uh, serious but complex issue is that it's not, nothing's gonna happen if we don't take each one of us a personal responsibility and commitment to it. I completely Okay, we all agree on that. I don't so we're that's us where we are getting that's, away from our demands yeah, though. That's right? where we're moving to and we will have open discussion on that. That will be open to yeah. all members of the community. Uh -huh. And of course you will continue yeah. to voice I, your view that an action that the board has not recommended act taking is one you'd like to take. Yeah, so, I think I, I, you know, we perhaps um, Samuel can jump in. Let's here. just be uh, clear about something. When you talk about uh, moving forward, you mean moving forward on the basis of a report that contains glaring inaccuracies and ambiguities. Well, moving um, forward on for, the I, basis. Excuse me. Yeah. Can I finish for a second? Yes. Like, for instance, we had a professor yesterday, I think, come give a speech outside in which they mm -hmm. said, "Correct me if I'm wrong, but the report would not receive a passing grade." Yeah. So uh, let's just be clear, we're talking yeah. about moving forward on the basis of this report. Yes, this report is recommending very concrete, substantial actions that will have a real impact. And I don't think we disagree about this. If you look at these actions that are being recommended, I don't think any of you would be against those actions. And we're not. Okay, so We are that's definitely good. not against those recommendations, so, but yeah. it is not an either or. This is a both and. Climate change is incredibly urgent, and we yeah. need to be taking all the actions that we yeah. can. But once on, again, on though, the I'm not. Sorry, can I just finish this? Um, I, I'm not. I'm not saying. Yeah. I'm not sitting with you here today, yeah. asking you to divest from the fossil fuel industry. Okay. I, I'm only asking that the main area where we disagree, we agree that mm -hmm. there needs to be more conversation. All I'm asking is that com that conversation doesn't just happen for the sake of happening, that that conversation, the results of those mm -hmm. conversations be used to modify this report and resubmit recommendations to the Board of Governors. And I don't think that's an unreasonable demand. I will not commit to that. I, I told you already because I have said that before. Now. I shouldn't say don't quote me on that because you probably will anyway. Oh, but I am not a dictator so here. I work within a governance process. I work and, and I respect that governance process immensely mm -hmm. uh, because I think that's how community, despite the fact that sometimes they don't see eye to eye on everything, eventually get to the right places. Yeah. I respect governance. This is a decision. We have a governance process here that has been working quite well for our university and uh, uh, we follow the governance process here. I'm not the sole decider here, although I will say 
I was on cancer and I agree with the recommendations. Absolutely. Okay, so what you are saying, just to it's, be clear, I'm not the only is one. that you, what we are asking, to be very clear, mm -hmm. is for you to change, is for you to go against those processes and make yes. changes to this report. Yeah. That yeah. is what we are asking. I know, and I'm saying that I'm not committing to it. All right. Okay. Um, I find that incredibly disappointing. I don't know if I anyone else has anything to say. Too, but I, I, you know, if you, if you, what you're asking is, is, is a, uh, it's a serious thing. Yeah. To disrupt your governance process is very, very serious. Now, I'm not a political scientist, as our provost is, but I do know that democracy works best when we agree on processes and we follow them. Than when we play, you know, uh, well, we'll change this on the fly and we'll change it. But I'm just, you know. I know, but just on the point about democracy, I also think democracy works best when those that are like decision making are really representing the community that they yes. are making decisions for. And the fact that there's overwhelming community support for divestment, and we're not even asking for divestment in this meeting, we're just asking for more transparent process and more community consultation. And it's hard just to even have that conversation. That, that seems a little appalling. Also, just the point about the processes, I think that if um, just the point that Nystrom made in the meeting, um, that the board has been the only vote, uh, the only group on campus that has voted against divestment, perhaps shows that these are broken processes if they are not representing community voices and they may not be democratic. Um, and in addition, the community hasn't agreed to these processes. True. Yeah, these, I mean, not like. <laughs> I don't think know. I want to get into yeah. that. Oh, okay. well, are you. Yeah, there's a lot Just of points. Just we should blindly, yeah. blindly stand behind this process, which maybe is... is particular about the report is how you don't speak about the indigenous community since we know is located on indigenous land since we are trying to um, kind of I guess like we would like to have a good relationship with the indigenous communities and I think it's particularly hurtful for the indigenous students who are studying at McGill um, or who would like to pursue an education at McGill to have McGill blatantly ignore what has happened to their communities yeah. or I'll just say one thing, and I, I, you know, I'm hearing you, and so uh, the report did not address that. I think the report made it clear that they were in the brief that was submitted, many, many, many points that were made, and that it wasn't going to, in the report, address every single one of them. So that that is true, and it says so very specifically. But, no, but you do and list then, those four, and yeah. then the only one you don't acknowledge yeah. is indigenous yeah. consent. So no. I mean, like, but I'm saying like you know saying... we acknowledge that we were not going to address every single point that was there in the petition. So let, I'm I mean, just saying of all the points to leave yeah, out of I'm, the four, I think that was the one point. If you were only going to okay. address one, that that should be the most important out of respect for your students. Yeah, I think. One thing that you just said is that it's very serious to change governance yes. processes. And I, I recognize that. I, yeah. I work at SMU. I yeah. follow governance procedures as yeah. well. And yeah. I also recognize that under extreme circumstances, processes have to be changed. And this, in my opinion, is an extreme circumstance. Climate change is one of the most pressing mm -hmm. issues of our time. Yeah. And so if you are standing behind processes, I don't think that in 20 years from now, People will look back on this and say that this is an acceptable reason. Yeah. I think people, and I, you know, I, I don't think I want to have a conversation where you agree, I disagree, and this and this. It's not, you know, we agree on so many things here. Uh, and, and if we take no action, concrete action that have a real impact, yes, people should look bad on us and say, what did you do? But that's not what the what we're saying here. We're saying we need to take very concrete actions. And some that might be not so easy actually to take because uh, we might, uh, each one of us, have to, well, maybe give up on some of the comfort that we've become accustomed to in this world and it's particularly in our society in North America. But we're prepared to take those concrete actions, and we're prepared to hear, you know, the one thing, and this is maybe an area where we don't see the same pictures, it's not a matter of disagreement, you know, it's when, when you say, well, uh, you're not hearing the community, you have no idea of the impact.
that uh, bringing this issue to uh, be much more uh, one that the community is aware of has had. We're moving in actions at a faster pace than I think we would have, and with a more um, with more intensity of purpose than we would have. I have no doubt that we would have gotten there because, hey, you know, we know everybody sees what's happening to the planet. Would we be in May, where I think we're going to be, and in next September we're going to be, at the intensity that we'll be without having had that issue brought to the fore in our community? I'm not so sure. No, and I so I think that there have. There are voices that have been heard, I, Not, and they have been heard clearly. And none of us are disagreeing on those recommendations. You think to, you're, you're smiling. I don't know if you're smiling because you don't believe me, or you're smiling because you think it's funny, or... I wouldn't like to comment on that. Okay. Moment. I just want to let you know that none of us disagree with <laughs> these just, recommendations. Yeah. We think it just goes back to the fundamental moral issue that while we claim to be a leader in sustainability, we are investing in companies which do environmental and social damage on a very extreme level. And so that is that is where sort of the disagreement yeah. occurs. And I don't think that by moving forward with a process that doesn't even allow us to talk about divestment yeah. in any concrete way yeah. is, I think that that's a real yeah. misstep of the administration. And I think that mm -hmm. that is going to be something that the community is really disappointed mm -hmm. in. Yeah. I feel very disappointed that you won't even consider rewriting the Kemsa report or in some way bringing divestment back to the table to the Board mm -hmm. of Governors. And mm -hmm. I'm really not sure how I, sitting mm -hmm. here, can change your mind that that, but that's not something, yeah. I mean, that's something that we are committed to stay here for until you mm -hmm. commit to bringing back mm -hmm. some sort of decision to di on divestment mm -hmm. back to the Board of Governors after this consultation. Mm -hmm. That is something that we are committed mm -hmm. to stay okay. here over. So once we're clear on that, I just want to talk about some of our other demands mm -hmm. because I think that the disagreement between yeah. whether or not we can take the community consultations and bring it back to the Board of Governors, mm -hmm. that seems to be a sticking point for you. So let's mm -hmm. move on to number two. Yeah. We want all of our expert testimonies mm -hmm. gathered through the CAMSR as mm -hmm. investigation to become public. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts so, on this? Um, not, uh, I, again, I cannot come into that before asking the people. Because the one thing uh, that is clear to me is that this is a recommendation from cancer. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to move the responsibility of the decision to another group. We, we uh, ask experts on the basis of their um, uh, expertise, scholarship, mm -hmm. uh, people who really know uh, this area very well because of the work they're doing. Uh, they're highly accomplished uh, scholars in these areas. They gave us their views, but the decision is the decision of cancer. And I don't want to, uh, it, it, I don't want to uh, pass on the responsibility to these people. I fully And that agree. was a rule of engagement with these people, and I respect rules of engagement. If they say, no problem, you can tell who we are, and what we said, fine. If they say, well, I'm not that comfortable with that, and, and precisely for the reason that I say. Can you, you know? at least commit to reaching out to the experts? Oh, we, we will, absolutely. Okay. No question about this. But I don't want them to uh, have that responsibility. That is not the way we engage them for their expertise. Um, they have various views on divest, so we didn't. You know, it's not on their, the view they have on divest, but it's their expertise. They are top, top, top expert in these areas, and that's why we wanted to talk to them. I, I completely agree. Yes. We so don't want to. We are not trying to take that. I the res want to respect. Mm -hmm. If they say yes, it's no problem. Yeah, we are not trying to take the responsibility yeah. for the decision away from Hamza. That yeah, other these people the to then Hamza. start being, you know, uh, asking. Mm -hmm. what yeah, I completely agree. Okay. And so, I, but what I would more, what I'd be more interested in mm -hmm. is actually who Kamser considered to be an expert on this issue oh. during this process, and that is Kamser's decision. You know, did you no, consult somebody actually, with not, traditional no, economic No, actually, Kamser did not did not express a view. 
on that. Uh, we How were these experts chosen then? On the basis of uh, the top achieving uh, scholars in these areas. Okay. And, you know, what areas are they achieving? Oh, well, in all sorts of uh, areas, from climate change to uh, um, sustainability to um, you know, all the, the areas that are related to uh, public, policy. public policy and so on. You know, and, and we use uh, uh, the, um, their standing in the research community. And, and we, didn't, we didn't decide. We, were, we just simply asked, who are the top scholars mm -hmm. in these areas? That's, and that's how uh, they were assembled. Kamsu uh, met with them because they are, not only in McGill, but in, in across Canada. So, I think it would be really important for us to know who those experts yeah, are. Yeah, but you understand, no. we, we will ask, but uh, I you know, I... The minister you, reach out to them? Yeah, and, yeah. And um, we have no... You have no problem reaching out to them, but I cannot guarantee to you that they will say yes. Okay. So okay. I think that something that's important mm -hmm. that um, yeah. is in here is that mm -hmm. we would want yeah. all of the testimonies that become public to be included mm -hmm. in a revised report and all of those mm -hmm. that choose to not be public to be excluded from this report. This to us is extremely important. We don't know why you are considering closed door meetings as being an appropriate method for obtaining oh, I, I, such well, a big I, issue. First of all, I, the, the, what, this is not a, we are closed. We were asking people who have the top expertise in these areas. Yeah, that's yeah. great. I, okay. I, I, I don't see what is the issue here but from but you. Me Why would we exclude these views? We're taking your word on that. That we did that? Well, yes, we. I, you know, I didn't choose them. Okay. No worries. I know. think the issue is that, especially if a report such as this, when when when, mm -hmm. when a report such such as this comes out, and mm -hmm. for 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 us, many of us who study environment mm -hmm. and study climate change, mm -hmm. and for many professors at McGill who study yeah. this and find such, yeah. such glaring inconsistencies, um, for. It's it's a it's a tough pill for for the entire community to swallow that 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 it's uh, that we shouldn't know the the entire basis upon which this yeah. this report was built, which is the expert testimonies. Um, Not only that, that was part of it. We looked at other. Uh, uh, there's been such uh, studies done at many universities, not just at McGill. We are not the sole owners of experts in this field. And as you know, many universities have reached out to experts and have convened some group who have prepared reports. So we also look at that, you know, internationally. So it's not just the expert at McGill. So I just but that yeah. was another part yeah. of Yeah, yeah, but I, I think it's applicable to all experts who were consulted, not just experts at you know, I think, I think it's definitely it's important that that that, that everyone who is consulted and what they said and the body and the intellect the and the intellectual mm -hmm. body that 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 this report is composed of is available to the public. Especially, this is a decision that is made made on behalf of the McGill community and without without a prior consult without a prior consultation. I think this is just a very a very, a very reasonable um, a, a, a very re uh, reasonable but measure again, to I want to make, it make up here. The, some of yeah. the lack of consultation. The recommendation is the recommendation of the yeah. cancer members. Yeah. Okay, we're and aware. we were very, very conscious of not moving that responsibilities to others. This is about holding cancer accountable, exactly, not, and, and not the experts. But it, so, it, but, it, it, but is, it is very the telling cancer, who the experts are. Um, who the cancer members did a lot of work. To, this is a, you know that, you know, you, many of you are students in environmental science. This is not a simple scientific issue. It's a very complex issue. And the expert member wanted as much as possible, the, the, the cancer member wanted as much as possible to engage in uh, having a not superficial but a more deep understanding of these issues at work here. That's why we did quite a bit of work 
including with the petition, but including also with other reports of experts done in other universities, consulting with people that have expertise in these areas. But at the end of the day, it's the cancer people who have to take on the responsibility for the recommendations that have been made. So I think one thing, I think we are satisfied with knowing that you're going to reach yeah. out to the yeah, we experts. Will. We will. No. However, no. the entire purpose of reaching out to these experts is so these public testimonials can be included in a revised report. Once again, yeah. consultation and transparency are great, but we want these mm -hmm. to amount to actual concrete decisions. Mm -hmm. And right now, the way that we are feeling is that you're saying, yeah, sure, we'll do these things, but you will do only the things that will allow you to essentially pay lip service to being open and transparent, but mm -hmm. you refuse to revisit your decision. And yeah. for that, for us, that's extremely frustrating. Well, I understand that it is frustrating. I understand it is frustrating for you, I understand, but I'm saying a group of people spent a year, did serious work, came to recommendation, made that recommendation, it was accepted by the board. They did their work. I'm not going to go back and ask them to do the work over and over and over again. Let's move on to... Taking the concrete action yes. that they recommended. That's what I'm that saying. That, that's, that's the... Yeah. That's what we want to do, and to hold an open forum on those yeah. recommendations, yeah, and to and to and to find a way of expressing yeah. the community's views on those recommendations. Yeah. What we are saying is that the cancer process, while we appreciate the time that went into that, was done in closed session. It was done without the consultation of many community members. It was done very sneakily. The board had how many hours to review the report? How many hours? Mm -hmm. Twenty six. That is. Unacceptable for the board members do not year. feel for the most part that it was unacceptable. They felt comfortable. Well, I can tell you right now that if that was done at SNU, our yeah. counselors would be outraged. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that that is acceptable at our university administrator level. This process that was done was untransparent and quite honestly, it was illegitimate. We don't know who you consulted. We don't know who you spoke to. We have missing points of information in the report itself, I don't know how you are not choosing to revisit it. And perhaps yeah. our last demand yeah. is the most glaring, mm -hmm. the most glaring example of where the report went wrong. And that is by not acknowledging yeah. the grave social injury yeah. caused by the fossil fuel industry. So we would like a statement yeah. acknowledging the You grave. won't get any statement other than what is in the cancer report from me. I'm not going to play any games with you. The cancer report says that these are very serious issues and that there is negative impact, absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm not going to say anything that is not already in the cancer report. So just to be clear, you're denying the claim that fossil fuel industries can, uh, caused grave social in uh, injury? Yeah. We're saying that it caused injury, absolutely, negative social injury. So does each one of us presence on this planet, so does our use of energy uh, sources from fossil fuel, so does our use of products that come from the petrochemical industry, so does every time you get on an airplane or a car or anything like that, absolutely, we cause social injury. We know that. We acknowledge that. We acknowledge that 100%. But it is not grave. But it it, as you say in the report, two degrees yeah. Celsius, that too is an acceptable answer because it has not reached two as degrees I Celsius. Say, you know. Therefore, because we haven't hit the worst of it, we can't consider the effects to be grave. That's essentially what is in the report. That's what is in the report, yes. Um, what I'm just kind of worried about was that by leaving out the point about the harm that it causes to indigenous communities, that was a strategic move, mm -hmm. and that made it easier for Kanzer to conclude that it didn't cause social injury, just because they didn't really mm -hmm. explicitly go through that point of what exactly uh, indigenous people have gone through with the fossil mm -hmm. fuel industry. So it made it easier to justify your point that it doesn't cause significant or grave social harm. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was done intentionally, no, not at all. Okay. I mean, you may think so. I cannot tell you what to think, but no, that that wasn't. Uh, no, I think I think, and, and I must say, I've been to many uh, discussion on this topic, and um, 
and you've read many other reports. Uh, while people all agree about the seriousness of the issue, the urgency to get to, a, to um, solutions, uh, most, you may not be among them, so I won't put words in your mouth, agree that we have to move urgently to an orderly transition. And the two words here are urgent and orderly. And that if we were to turn the tap tomorrow on fossil fuels, it would cause grave, I don't know, if I won't use grave, so it would cause <coughs> negative impact. Absolutely, absolutely. Many people would be without a lot of things that are essential to their well-being. McGill. If we were to do that. McGill divesting from fossil fuels would not turn the tap on. So it's a symbolic fossil. action. So that's where we disagree maybe. Yeah, you know, saying for that us, what we're asking for is not to turn the tap on this fossil fuel industry. So market. what's the intent then? The, the intent in many ways is to make a political action. And I know that yeah. you have said, yeah, and I know that you have said the university is not a political yeah, actor. That's you quoted right. Harvard in saying that. But yes. I don't know how you claim to be a leader in sustainability, yet deny all political involvement. You universities have a political impact. That's why well, you have pictures of you yeah. taking hands with Stephen Harper in your reception area. <laughs> That's why you've met with Justin Trudeau. Universities have a political impact, and to deny that we are a political actor is entirely false. Why did we divest from tobacco? Why did we divest from South African apartheid? It is because those are political statements that by using our power mm -hmm. as an institution for higher learning, yeah. we can have a serious impact for good. Yes. Why yeah. is... I, so I don't understand how you can deny the university's role as a political actor. I, do, I don't understand. Well, I mean, universities have taken a role as political actor in very, very clear and um, in very clear areas where there was clear consensus. I did that in my first week at McGill. You may not know that. You might not have been here. But I stood up after a few days at McGill to say that this university was not in favor of the charter of value that the pro le projet de loi de la mm -hmm. province du Québec. Yeah. And I did that because there was consensus on the campus. I did check that there was consensus by reaching out to every leader in this community that I had just arrived. And I was able to do that. And that's great. We and, but that. that is an extreme case here where uh, there was clear consensus and the issue was very straightforward for this community and that's why we reached consensus. Okay. It's rare, it's rare that we have such issue. If you think of tobacco, you know, you'd be, you'd, you'd have difficulty to find positive mm -hmm. impact of the use of tobacco. Yeah, I think. But if you think of fossil fuel, well, you know, uh, there's been, we now realize, of course, that there are very serious negative impacts. But it's done a lot of good initially, certainly, and we, we all have benefited from that. Now we say, oh, wait a minute, we didn't realize that part, now we better take action, and we are. But it is not an area where you'd say there's a clear... Um, consensus? No. Perhaps? I would disagree. There's a clear consensus on the urgency to an orderly transition, I believe. Well, maybe okay. not on orderly. <laughs> There's a clear consensus on a transition. Yeah, I, the word that yeah. we would use at the best Miguel is a just transition, one that prioritizes yeah. indigenous rights, allows workers to continue working, et cetera. Yeah. That's something that we've been advocating for, and I think that it's very clear in our messaging that fossil fuel divestment yeah. isn't about getting off fossil fuels tomorrow. It's about taking away the social license for fossil yeah. fuel companies to operate with impunity. That has always been our message, and that's what we're saying today. Yeah. But I have a very clear question for you, actually, okay. because let's not talk about yeah. whether or not we agree on climate yeah. change or whether fossil yeah. fuels are good or bad. Let's talk about what's in the report specifically and on statement of social injury. So you're saying you won't make the statement because the report says it all. Do you, will you acknowledge that failure to obtain indigenous consent violates the enforcement of rules of domestic or international laws against the deprivation of health, safety, or basic rights. I, I, I'm not going to say yes or no, because I don't say yes or no to questions like this. I would study more deeply before I say yes or no. I'll go back, review the facts, and all of that. 
I'm not going to say yes or no on the spot here. Okay, but that would okay. be something you would be considering perhaps maybe in the next couple of hours you could go. I no, give you I won't commit to that. I have other things in my uh, day mm -hmm. that are scheduled, so I'm not going to leave this meeting and hit uh, all of the reports and do the due diligence that I feel would be required for me to answer your question. So I'm not Could you commit to, to preparing a response to that question and making that response public? Within a given time frame, I think it's a, you know I'm not I'm not I I'd have to think about it you know it's a bit of a trick question frankly I'm not sure that that I, I you know <laughs> I want to come into yeah. that yet I mean you know uh, these questions are not simple <laughs> I mean we don't like to to live in a world where the questions are simple and the answers are yes or no but frankly uh, that is not often the case. Uh, and we certainly have good um, uh, heads and good good people, good scholars in this area that I would certainly want to hear from. Well, we you know, these are not simple questions. You we also have over 200 individuals. So if you students. ask me yes or no questions, I, I, you know, I can tell you yes or no on certain things, but on many things I won't tell you yes or no on the spot. I felt like that was a very clear question, and you are not answering no, the, whether or not. No, the question is clear, but the, 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 yeah, totally. it is complex. Yeah, yeah. So the question the is itself is, it is complex. Is the failure to obtain indigenous consent a violation of the enforcement of rules of domestic or international laws against the deprivation of health, safety, or basic freedoms? You think that's simple? Yes. I don't. I think yeah. my answer is yes. Mm -hmm. That that's a violation. No, uh, you think your question is simple? I think that the, I think the answer is the, simple to a lot of people. Because violating the consent of anyone is again is depriving them of their rights. Well, it depends. You know, it depends on what the treaties are. It depends on what the agreements have been. It depends on a lot of things. I have to know that before I answer your question. I'm not going to answer. It. No. He's the political scientist expert. Well, then but maybe would you answer, answer that question on the spot? No, I, mean, the, I, I don't know enough detail. about the uh, about the details of the question yeah. to be able to answer it on the spot. So yeah, yeah. See, I feel like these are the sorts of questions that Kansas should go through before finalizing a vote. You know, this would have been yeah. a very relevant thing for everybody on the board of governors to research before they had their vote. You know, you say you don't like to make complex decisions right on the spot, but you gave the board of governors twenty six hours to read through this report, which has a lot of implications in it. It has a lot of particularly troubling statements. And I think that this is one of the strongest examples for how... I'm actually quite honestly appalled that this is not something that was considered. When you... That this is an answer you cannot give me because you say you don't have enough information. How was that not considered before you released the Kanser report? You're on cancer, yes? Yes, I am. Yes. So how was that not considered when it was clearly in our research brief? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we discussed it, but you know, you're asking me out of memory here to go back? No, I can't uh, tell you. No. Would you say that uh, that is a problem with the cancer report? No, I don't think so. Because, you know, when you look at, uh, at issues that are that complex, uh, there, uh, there, of course, you know, you can pick at every single little detail in everything and, uh, well, would still be studying the report. At one point, I think you come to what you think is the right direction and uh, you, you have to make a, a recommendation and you do. Now, of course, you can... On peut l'éplucher en petits morceaux, okay? And that, you know, you're asking... Should we go back and do that? I don't think so. I think it's time for us to move on and, and to take concrete actions. I think the, you know, I'm, I'm going to come back to that. The actions were, were, that have been recommended by CAMSER are concrete actions that have, I think, that will have a real impact. And the one action that you favor, and I respect that, Council did not believe it would have a real impact, did not believe it was the appropriate action to take at this time. We're not talking about investment right now. We're I know, but I'm saying injury. that, you know, we're talking about what the recommendations are, 
which ought to take concrete actions. Yeah. That's what is happening. We're not talking about the recommendations right now. We're talking about social injury itself. That's what our demand yeah. is. Um, and I don't think that Indigenous students on campus are going to be satisfied with, or Indigenous community members, Indigenous people in this province are going to be satisfied with the principle of Miguel saying, that's just a small detail. We can't go over anything. When that I in didn't this say it was just a small detail, but I'm great, saying to you that... The most impact of the fossil fuel industry, and that has been blatantly ignored in this report. I'm saying that it is a very complex question that you ask. You're making an assertion, and you're asking me to say yes or no. And, and I'm saying I can't do that on the spot. I'm not saying that it's not important. I'm saying that the whole issue of indigenous rights is indeed a very complex issue in this country. And would I single-handedly pick this group here as the one that I want to point my finger at as opposed to this group? I'm not sure at this point, no. So you're talking about a complex issue. I and you're asking me to give a simple answer to a complex issue, and I'm telling you, I'm not comfortable with that at all. Yeah, okay. I think that mm -hmm. when we're talking about social injury, yeah. we find a number of issues. We, I think that that, for us, is perhaps the biggest issue of this report, is that, you know, there's like a statement where... There is social injury caused by fossil fuel industries, mm -hmm. and like you said, we, we all acknowledge that, yeah. but that impact is not grave social injury. And I, I think that perhaps mm -hmm. that's where we have a major yeah. disconnection, is yeah. because I think to go and tell communities on the front lines, indigenous mm -hmm. communities, communities who've been hit by natural disasters, be it in Canada, in the United States, mm -hmm. or abroad, I don't know how you can sit down with them. I don't know how I would be able to sit down with them and say that the destruction of their homes that they've experienced, the you know, the lack of ability to participate mm -hmm. in their traditional lifestyles, that issue is not grave enough. I don't but I that is where Are you let me ask you a question. So are you prepared to assign the blame to a, a small group of industry or don't we all have a responsibility in that? I, I mean, that's where I have difficulties with these simplification, if I can put it this way, because my sense is at one point we all have to take responsibilities. And I'm not personally comfortable with saying, okay, you there, okay, you're the ones who are causing that. Mm -hmm. I, my deep sense, is that we are all individually responsible and organizations and um, that we will not have, um, we will not be moving in the right direction if we don't understand that. And so my sense is that we each have to understand our own responsibility what we need to make, the changes we need to make in our own lives. Because at the end of the day, and there we might not agree on that, but I think that supply and demand is pretty, you know, if there's no demand for something, the supply will. Yeah, we address this in the yeah. 150 pages. <coughs> yeah. Re yeah. Many times. So we agree on that. So no, no, we... We disagree on that. Well, we, don't we, did, agree. we fully disagree on that. <laughs> okay, we disagree on that. We disagree <laughs> in the sense that fossil fuel companies have gone above and beyond in their contribution to this problem. No, no, but they I have I'm lobbied just... governments. They had knew about science. But You're a you scientist. I'm a scientist. How are you okay with the fact that Exxon hid scientific information from the public for decades? That information could have saved lives, and they hid that information. How does that not contribute to grave social injury? The, they have lobbied governments. They get subsidies from our own government to contribute to this harm. They've contributed above and beyond. And they are the ones who are trying to, you know, buy off indigenous communities or go around treaties. You know, the, the Beaver Lake Cree Nation has cited 
hundreds of treaty violations on their territories. Um, the fossil fuel industry has gone above and beyond, and I don't deny that there's definitely an issue on the consumer end. None of us are denying that. We are just saying that what the fossil fuel industry does itself goes so much, so further beyond that. Okay, that's your view. And you have no intention <coughs> of saying that the fossil fuel industry causes grave social injury. You no, I won't say, say that. I work on the cancer report. I was a member, and I think, you know, if I put my name to that recommendation, I w and I think you understand that, you're part of a group, um, you're working on this, you know, and I, I will say what is in the cancer report. Yeah, I mean, I've, this group started to say things like, the fossil fuel industry doesn't cause grave social injury. I wouldn't be a part of this group for very much longer. Yeah. I would, you know, I would do everything in my power as an individual mm -hmm. to make things right because yeah. what but we have said that it has negative impact, absolutely. But and that impact is not grave. That's right. That's what we said. Not as defined by cancer, yes. In Which the terms of reference of the work that we were doing. The yes. violation of yeah. the enforcement of rules yeah. of domestic yeah. or international laws against yeah. the deprivation of health, safety, or basic freedoms. Yeah. Okay. Hey, sorry, yeah. it just bothers me that we're drawing the line at like social injury and grave social injury. Yeah. That you don't consider that the transforming well, the lifestyle of indigenous you know, people, that massive like um, natural disasters that they're occurring so much more frequently around the world, that people are dying, those more frequent disease people. Um, and they can't pr practice their yeah. traditional lifestyle. I mean, that's why we say we must move to action, and we must do that now, absolutely. But uh, it has to be orderly. We can't move to these actions. We can't move to a new energy environment that's tomorrow. That's what we're asking. I know, but you know. How, so how would the demand for alternative energies rise, or wouldn't, the supply, if you have lower supply mm -hmm. of fossil fuels, right, mm -hmm. then the demand for alternatives is going to rise. That's that's the basic idea here. Well, I don't know. It seems to me that it tends to work more the other way. If there's demand for a product, people will continue producing it. And if there's no demand for a product, it will disappear from the market. You know, and that's, that's what I've seen. You know, people. Most people don't have a choice. We have, as consumers, we have a lot of influence on what's out there in the market. It's very easy for. Mm -hmm. people of middle class and upper middle class mm -hmm. and wealthy people to say, yeah, let's just choose to go on to alternative energies. Mm -hmm. Most people can't afford to do that. Most mm -hmm. people have to buy the cheapest thing. Yeah. They can't afford to go organic or be vegetarian or buy mm -hmm. biodegradable yeah. fuel. It is the responsibility of everyone to make mm -hmm. sure that people don't need to make those tough decisions of whether they're going to be able to feed their family or yeah. whether they're going to have to yeah. worry about if mm -hmm. they're producing a little more carbon. Mm -hmm. It's up to everyone to make sure and that, that we're doing everything. I totally, that I totally agree products. with you. And we need to do the research. We need to advance the knowledge so that we can make those things more affordable. Which, you know. Well, we agree with you that supply and demand yeah. is a thing. All right? We understand that there's two sides to the coin. Yeah. What we're saying is that the market is not fair right now. Yeah. Um, and that was something you say. They yeah. lobby the governments. Mm -hmm. They have massive amounts of money and they obtain massive amounts of subsidies and they violate laws and they buy their way out of them. That is what's happening right now. The fossil fuel industry is not playing by the rules. So to say that somehow the system will fix itself with supply and demand is ignoring the fact that these companies are not playing by the rules. And that's your perspective. I think Council came to a different view. That so you believe that fossil fuel companies are entirely lawful and playing by the rules? I don't think we said entirely, but for the most part, yes, are lawful companies who operate within the law, yes. I mean, oh, listen, you've never, never violated any law in your life? Come on, you know. I'm not a company. I'm just the, You're not a company, you know, but I mean, yes, they have an infraction, uh, and they pay, uh, they, they, they pay the price for that when they have. Sorry yes. to interrupt your five minutes. Oh, okay, thank Sorry. you for my five minutes. Yeah, yeah. 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 people coming. Okay, okay. But you know, I mean, so. so can I just insert just minor? 
their infraction to the law are just like minor. There have been there have been allegations that were not minor, but until until they're proven, they, 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 you know, allegations are allegations. You, you can't. Uh, uh, that that's what you. Uh, basic principle of fairness is allegations are allegations until proven. So. Before you leave, can we just? Make sure we're on the same page about the concrete steps yes. that, that 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 you and your office are going to take mm -hmm. to rectify some of these concerns that mm -hmm. that we have. Um, mm -hmm. So, are you going? Are you going to be present? Are you going to be present at a community consultation? Yes. Yeah. yeah. How many? I'm not. Many I'm not telling you when because we yeah. have to organize. Yeah, it. of course. And I don't know when is the best time, you know, our community is moving into exam period and all of that. So, uh, you know, it's end of class and exam period, but we certainly will have those more than one, I, I would yeah. suspect. Well, yeah. We did the open forum on free works, uh, peaceful yeah. assembly and free expression. We did four. Yeah. We did three at downtown campus, mm -hmm. one at the MAC campus. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, I think we could design a process yeah. that looks... But well, roughly similar to that. Will mm -hmm. divestment be explicitly talked about in the <coughs> discussions? I won't, but if you're there, you know, we don't, if you want to talk about it, you can. Again, my experience from yeah. the open forum mm -hmm. that I, I led is that the conversations were wide ranging, including yeah. on matters that weren't mm -hmm. necessarily within the mandate mm -hmm. of, the, uh, yeah. of, of the open forum. Will mm -hmm. there be a report prepared after the forums, as was done in the, the open forums mm -hmm. on freedom of assembly? I mean, in principle, uh, I don't see any reason not to provide a report of what was of what was discussed. With mm -hmm. so and then, what will be done with that report itself? That's something I think we have to talk about yeah. heavily. With, but again, I think what's the governance be. process? Of, mm -hmm. And I know what happened to the open forum. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, my open forum report mm -hmm. went to Senate, and then I think it, it wasn't formally adopted by yeah. the board, but it was at least mm -hmm. uh, given to. We'll design a process that involves the community with the Just community. In terms of, of processes, because I know you don't want to break. Yeah. Let's say Divest Miguel submits another petition. Super easy. We have so many people who support us already. We submit a second petition. We just resubmit our mm -hmm. our brief just for formality's sake. Mm -hmm. uh, you have this new report. We include it in our report. You make this report publicly mm -hmm. available. We include it in our report. It's back on Kamser's desk. Yeah. That's a fair procedure then? Yeah, it is. Okay, so Kamser will reconsider this report. It may, we just but have to it, it will. It will. I'm not telling you how much work it will do on it. It might say, well, our views have not changed. I don't know. You know. So like Kamser bring might, new evidence. after these reports, yeah. Kamser might just wipe its hands and ignore it, but they might consider it. Yeah. All right. So mm -hmm. that's okay. It seems yeah. like a silly process to do. But yeah, it does, but, but you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, one thing that, uh, uh, because of the recommendation, so there will be a report to the board as of May on plans of action, mm -hmm. and then there will be a report every year. Yeah, I mean, that's so not that's the most important thing for us. Oh, okay. we want to talk about for me, it's very important. It's yeah. important for us, but not, but it's very not, important. not in this conversation. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. Yeah. Not in this conversation, but, you know, eventually. I know it's important. Uh, yeah. Okay, and the expert testimonies, would those be able to be included? In, who will be mandated to chair these open, open forums? Well, that's something we'll have to discuss. We'll have to yeah. talk to we people. We haven't uh, to, devised uh, the, 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 it. And they're not going to devise a process on the spot. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I mean, I have a you know a template in my mind yeah. because I've yeah, done, you've it. done it. It was a, well so. done. I have the copy yeah. of it here, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do think that it is, um, will we be able to include the expert testimonies, mm -hmm. make those public before those processes, those open forums occur, so everyone can have a chance to sort of read over those expert testimonies and also see who was included and maybe who wasn't. Yes. You mean the, uh, the expert testimonies from Hamster. I think we're, uh, our timeline, I, was, I think the idea is to get in touch with the people as soon yeah. as possible. Yeah. Yeah. So, Do you have a rough timeline for when these public hearings will be held? I mean, well, I would call them the yeah. open forum, uh, mm -hmm. let's call it that. Again, I think it should be done at a time mm -hmm. that maximizes the ability of the community to mm -hmm. participate in it. Is right now the best time? I don't yeah. know. Uh, yeah. Probably in the fall. Or early yeah, fall early in the, the fall, I think, is the best to time. To make sure that a maximum number yeah. of people can participate. Right now, frankly, to have this when we know students are going into exams. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's fine with us. Yeah. Okay. I think that for us, we want to make sure that there's more than one. I think yeah. four <laughs> is yeah. a good number. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. I think that, yeah, making sure that they're super publicly accessible. Yeah. A lot of students can come. I know that we'll be there. Yeah. Um, we have a lot to say about this yeah, report. We, we widely advertised it. There was a website. Mm -hmm. We were live streamed. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can make these things very, yeah. very Also, yeah. it's successful. a big requirement for us, for committee members to also submit their responses via email. If they, for, yeah. if they for some reason cannot. Yeah, yeah, there was a, I mean, yeah. I'm trying to remember now, uh, there was an email, as I said, there was a website, there was an email address, mm -hmm. there was yeah. an opportunity for people to uh, engage in mm -hmm. a variety of different ways in that process. But yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. very clear, it's an open forum on the recommendations of the council report. Mm -hmm. People, of course, can speak about the content of the report yeah. as much as they want, but yeah. I think yeah. that's, uh, that's uh, mm -hmm. you know, I found that to be quite a valuable thing that mm -hmm. I went through. All right, we're looking forward to reading this report, that's for sure. Um, but oh, I, it's not produced yet. <laughs> we, know, we haven't had the forum. No, well, we're, we're looking forward to participating <laughs> yeah, in this participating forum. participating first. Reading and then, the yeah, conclusions. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know that there would be many of us who would be happy to help synthesize okay. if you need help Good. with that. Mm -hmm. I think that we would, yeah, we'd, okay. we'd be able to help with these public forums as much as possible, and we're mm -hmm. glad we're holding them. We do wish that there was a direct uh, response to cancer, but if we need to do that process for you, then that is something that we will do. We just hope that this is not all for nothing and that the cancer, cancer will reconsider based on these public hearings. Mm -hmm. And that is something you say cancer should be able to reconsider with this new evidence. So, you know, I cannot speak on behalf no. of cancer. I'm no, but you're, sure. a, you're a member of cancer. I am a member, but I'm not the only member. No, but so. would your personal recommendation be that cancer reconsider based on these public hearings? Well, let's be clear. I mean, they're not public hearings in the report. Okay. It's an open, open forum. Open, yeah. open forum. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. that's a better way of understanding yeah. it. Okay. I, think that, that, I think that provides for the mm -hmm. for the widest range yeah. of opportunities for discussion about yeah. all of the issues, mm -hmm. and including and perhaps focused on the recommendations of cancer. But it's so open here. It's open I think that's an important. Okay, so you haven't given me any answer about the GUI based on these open sessions, these open forums. Mm -hmm. Would your personal recommendation be that cancer? Well, reconsider? you know, it's hard to. Let's see what the community gets to as it, what the consensus that emerged from the community as with these. Uh, let's see what what we learn from that. You know, for me, the most important thing, and and I, I will repeat it, and I will annoy you by repeating, is that we take concrete actions as a community. And on this, I'm convinced that we are pretty much on the same page, and that's where I want to get to ASAP. Yeah, so as provost, so, you know, as provost I'm most interested in knowing what, what advice can I get from the community mm -hmm. on how to turn the recommendations mm -hmm. of the cancer report that have been mm -hmm. adopted by the board into actual things that we can do as a community in, mm -hmm. terms, of, yeah. uh, in terms of budgetary allocations, in terms of supporting different research projects mm -hmm. and so on. We have a number of different recommendations there that could be, mm -hmm. yeah. maybe we can flesh out a bit. Yeah, and, uh, I, that's that's mm -hmm. what I'm interested in. Is mm -hmm. I think there's a lot to talk about in the recommendation, but also very much so within the findings, which brings us to our last point. And I think that that's where, mm -hmm. I can't speak on behalf of everyone in the room, but I personally would not be prepared to leave here today. Mm -hmm. I would not feel comfortable leaving today if yeah. you are unwilling to acknowledge that yeah. activities of fossil fuel corporations cause grave social harm, mm -hmm. the exasperation of climate change, and the yeah. devastating impacts and on And as I said, I will not say anything that is not in the report. So yeah, as long as you take care of this place, uh, you're welcome to stay. <laughs> no. I mean, this is, this is you, you're here. We haven't pushed you out. Um, and we understand that you will respect these sites and will not, uh, will you'll act responsibly and you can stay. We are not going to push you out. So, well, perhaps you know. you know the question I asked you. You said you would need some more time mm -hmm. to look over it. Would you be prepared to come back after spending some time <coughs> looking through that question and giving us an answer? It won't be next week. I'm away next week, all week. So, okay. What about? I, I, you know, you. <coughs> <coughs> Cancer did its work, and as far as I'm concerned, we did our work. I'm not going to revisit the cancer report. I'm not going to. It's over. 
the decision was made at the board, it's over. I want to move on. You may bring back divest, that's your right. That's and, and we can another time re enter this conversation. Okay. But I'm not gonna revisit it. I will not give you We're not asking you. you know, I and, and one thing I will make clear to you and and I respect you, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I will not play games with you. I will not tell you that I'm going to do something if I'm not. I will be, I'm being open with you. I'm telling you what we're prepared to do. I'm telling you what matters to me very clearly, what we want to do. And I will not play games. So okay. I'm not asking you to play games. This no, is no, not but a I'm game saying, you know, I'm not going to say, oh, well, you know, well, maybe if I phrase it, no. What is in the report is in the report. I put my name to it. That's it. Yeah, this okay. is, this statement, this demand yeah. is not that Kamsar makes that statement. Yeah. It is that you yeah, and I'm personally a Kamsar, make this so statement. I will not, but know, Kamsar. Drink, <coughs> Kareem Ibrahim, who's the president of yeah. SMU, re voted yes to a motion that says the SMU reiterates yeah. our acknowledgement of the fact yes. that the fossil fuel industry causes grave social mm -hmm. injury. So Kareem made his statement against the report. Yes, we are did. asking you to do the same. Yeah, and I won't because I voted in favor of the report. I voted for the report to be recommended to the board. So I will keep my word. You understand? So you personally believe that the fossil fuel industry doesn't cause grave social injury? I that's am personally, you to if you ask me personally, I'm convinced that our use of fossil fuel has caused injury to the environment, absolutely. I'm convinced that uh, we've got to wean ourselves out of that, absolutely. I'm also aware of the fact that it's not going to happen tomorrow and that we need to have an orderly transition and the extent to which we can use all the talent we have to do so, we might get to where we need to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's where, personally, where I am, yes. Because, you know, that's where we are. We, we're, not, we're not asking that we, that we do that transition tomorrow, which we've reiterated many times, but you are saying that we do everything in our power to make that transition, and is divestment not yeah. part of that? No, it's not. You don't think that that's to me, you know, we all have university. our opinion. That's where we diversion opinion. To me, that action is not a concrete action that will have impact. It's a symbolic political action, but okay? We are but yeah, I respect that you want to make yourself, you would like us to take that action. I'm you, saying to me... However, you just said that these companies, you didn't use the word grave, which I understand you're mm -hmm. doing because mm -hmm. in the report we didn't reach that threshold of grave, yeah. um, technically, yeah. like, apparently to Gamser. Yeah. Um, but you are saying... It's a symbolic action, but we are financially supporting these companies, which you just said do cause serious social injuries. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just have one last question for you. We um, sent you an invitation a little while ago to an anti-graduation ceremony that will yes. be taking place tomorrow. Yes. We're just wondering. Um, we have I have to tell you one thing alumni, here. again. I'm 20 alumni who are yeah. coming to the graduation yeah. ceremony because they're so appalled by yeah. the deal's investment I, in know, fossil fuels that they don't want to be associated yeah. to such an institution. And so we were wondering if you would be there on behalf of the McGill administration or CAMSA. I'm not sure to, um, I will be there. I have to tell you. To alumni and understand their point of view. I will tell you this. Uh, my McGill degree is one of the most precious things I own. Seriously. Because I know what it's done for me. Am I prepared to throw it in the garbage? Am I prepared to erase it out of my CV? No. We're not and asking. Well, uh, what is it then? It's a simple. But alumni are because they are so okay. okay. But uh, you know. I'm <laughs> okay, I, I mean, just want you to know that we will. We are prepared to continue I'm taking not prepared action. Myself to do that. Until so our demands are met. Think twice before they show you a degree in the no, they, They've thought very okay. thoroughly yeah. about it, and I think they're happy with it. So decision. I respect their view. You know. All right. Well, thank you okay. for meeting with us. We are prepared okay. to continue Thanks taking action until our demands are met. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Hopefully you'll reconsider coming to the ceremony tomorrow. We're looking forward to seeing you there. Meeting with us sometimes within the next two years. Oh my goodness.
Hi. So live streaming, guys. Oh. What did you think? So, um, perhaps by way of uh, conclusion, I can uh, say something that's um, on my mind concerning the distinction raised in the report between social injury and grave social in injury. This reminds me of uh, an old joke. It, it goes that uh, <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, redefine success. And I'm reminded of this joke because it seems that uh, McGill is taking um, a line of action which reflects the idea that um, if you can no longer honestly maintain that fossil fuels do not cause social in uh, injury, redefine social in uh, injury with the qualifier of grave such that business as usual with the fossil fuel industries can be maintained. I love you, Daniel.